This game contains violence and is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, my name is Emma and I've come to play more Sweetest Valentine with you today. This is part two and we will be covering Yuzuki's route this time. We did all of Ichigo's route last time. So yeah, I will be skipping all the parts that we already have read. So I'll see you soon. Right, so now we're at our first choice regarding Yuzuki and we are going to ask Yuzuki if he wants to come in our house with us. I'm honestly afraid that Yuzuki will reject me. But you won't know until you try, right? Yuzuki, could we talk inside my house for just a while? Hmm? Is it something you couldn't talk about right now? Well, I'd appreciate it if we talk alone, just the two of us. Dot, dot, dot. After all, Ichigo might make fun of me if I openly tell him. I smell something spicy here. <laughs> something spicy? I don't smell anything though. Maybe you should just leave and go home, Yuzuki. Your parents would get angry if you got home late, right? <laughs> Ichigo's being naughty. I love it. Shut it, Ichigo. This is between me and Yuzuki. Maybe she wants to... Confess. I quickly muffle Ichigo's mouth before he could say any more. Luckily, Yuzuki is pretty dense, as he only tilts his head in confusion. Mfft. Bah! Get off me! Fine, fine, I'll leave so you two can have your quality time together. Have fun. Huh? Why does he seem so down? Should we get inside then, Amy? Oh, yeah. It won't take more than 15 minutes, so don't worry. I bring Yuzuki inside with me. Even though he's with me, he's still acting polite when he enters. Good to have good manners. Excuse me. Just come in. Didn't I tell you my parents were always aware? It's just me here, so no need to be so formal. I suppose you're right. Sorry, it's just a habit of mine. And why did you bring me to your kitchen? Well, actually... I open the refrigerator and pull out the gift I made for Yuzuki, and then hand it to him. My throat is beginning to feel dry and my heart is thumping loudly. What I feel right now is a mixture of nervousness, fear and excitement all at the same time. <sighs> Here. I remember that your favourite dessert was lemon cheesecake, so I made one for you. <laughs> That's funny. Like you got a lemon cheesecake and Ichigo got a strawberry one. We're kind of matching their hair colours. <laughs> Imi. Thank you. I do love lemon cheesecake. That made me sigh out of relief. I don't know what I'd do if I'd remembered wrong. But that's just one issue over. The other one is... Yuzuki. Actually... That's... That is actually a Valentine's gift. Ah! Oh, that's right. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, isn't it? Does he even get what I mean by that? Oh well. Guess I'll have to spell it out for him. Yes, by giving that gift, I'm saying that, um, I like you. More than just a friend. Oh dear, the music's gone. Oh dear. Oh, I see. I understand. I am a, I'm sorry. The truth is, he's gay! <laughs> I already have a what? What? What the fuck was that? What? I love you too. What? That scared me. What happened? What happened? I'm gonna have to rewind that. What the hell happened? Oh my god, I didn't enjoy that. Don't do that to me. Huh? Y you do? Yes, it's true. I honestly didn't think you'd feel the same way. I'm still rooting for you if you like boys. That's what I should be saying. You're perfect in every way. Pretty much 
Everyone likes you. You're also friendly with almost everyone. Ugh, well my uh, recording software wanted to do an update then. That was great timing. Thanks for that. Taking me out of the story. So let's get back to it now. Right. I was hesitating because I thought you'd reject me. I mean, I'm just a normal girl with nothing to boast about. I think you have some things to boast about. For example, you're so sleepy that you always doze off during class. How is that something to boast about? I find it cute, you're like a cat. Dot dot dot. I also think you cook well, you're caring of others, except for bunny rabbits. And you're sometimes brave enough to say what's on your mind, instead of putting a pretense. Sheesh, okay I get it. You're embarrassing me with those compliments now. <laughs> that expression you're making is adorable as well. I said cut it off. Anyway, since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, I was wondering if you'd want to go on a date with me after school. Uh, what's this? Yuzuki suddenly looks troubled. What's the matter? Do you have something to do at that time? Well, actually, I've been planning to run away from home the past few days. Aww. Dot dot dot. How come you want to run away from home? What's wrong? Huh? Yuzuki then pulls out a train ticket scheduled to go the day after tomorrow. But why? I just feel very suffocated at home. You remember how I said I was trying to be more independent? Well, it's for a reason. I see. Even though we just got together. We're together now. Well, you're together. I'm not together. Yuck. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to stop you from leaving if you really do feel bad at home. I'm just... I'm just a bit sad. No, I get it. It just shows that you care for me, and I appreciate that. Because of that, I was thinking that I want to spend the rest of today and tomorrow with you. Huh? Would it be asking too much if I stay at your house tonight? Oh dear. What? What are you saying? Of course I'd be more than happy to let you stay. Thank you very much, Aimee. I'll be in your care. I don't trust him as much as I trust you. Uh, e uh, what's he called? Not Izuku. Uh, Ichigo. I don't trust him as much. He's creepy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I still can't believe that just happened. Who knew it escalated as quickly? I'm worried. It feels awkward being the parental guidance to this. <laughs> Aside from the fact that someone gave me a dead bird and Yuzuki will be leaving, today is just miracles after miracles. I'm looking forward to tomorrow now. I wish tomorrow will be just as nice. Is he staying tonight or tomorrow night? Oh dear. The first thing I smelled when waking up was the faint scent of curry. In the morning? Curry in the morning? Bloody hell, you be pooping all day! <laughs> I wonder if it's my mom's cooking, but I remembered that she's still away in Osaka. That's right, Yuzuki is supposed to be sleeping on the futon beside my bed, but why is it empty? What did you get up to last night? You're both in trouble. <laughs> Only then did I connect the dots. Yuzuki, he's cooking, isn't he? Why is he cooking, Kuri? As I try to get up, I notice that my head stings. Not only that, but my entire body too. When I look at myself in the mirror, everything seems fine. Dot dot dot. What the? Must be my imagination. Yes, yes, you're just imagining. Imagining? Imagine. What's the word? It's just your imagination that you feel pain all over your body and head. Yes, of course. All in your mind. Thinking that way, I nonchalantly leave my room to check up on the kitchen. Not burning the house down, I use the key. 
and sure enough I see Yuzuki in the kitchen. He seems to be chopping some vegetables while also cooking the curry. I couldn't think of a worse thing you could make me for breakfast. <laughs> Smelling the curry from nearby now makes my mouth drool. It make, it's making me feel sick. I don't eat breakfast. <laughs> I have orange juice for breakfast. That's enough for me, thanks. I've tested his cooking in our home economics class. It tastes heavenly. He really can do everything, can't he? Good morning, Amy. What did you do to her? Why is her body hurting? How's your sleep? It's good! Of course it's good. We were sleeping in one room after all. I'm not going to say that out loud though. Even if we're lovers, it's still embarrassing. I'm glad to hear that. Ah, and about that curry. I noticed that you have a leftover of it. It hasn't gone bad yet, and I simply thought that it would be a waste to throw it out here. Now I'm reheating it and adding a couple of ingredients so that the curry will be enough for the both of us. I hope you don't mind. Why would I mind? I should be the one thanking you. Even though it's leftover, I'm still excited to eat it. Whatever it is you cook, I'm sure it'll turn out perfect. You gotta give him a complex. You're so perfect, 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 perfect. Nobody is perfect, friend. Not one person on this earth is perfect. For some reason, Yuzuki suddenly stops chopping and looks straight at me. He's got a knife. Thank you. Then he goes back to chopping potatoes like it's nothing. What's all that about? I don't know, he gives me weird vibes. <laughs> Is he mad that I'm not helping him out? Let him be, help him. Um, I shall help him this time. Yuzuki, are you mad that I'm not helping you out? If that's the case, I'll lend you a hand. I bet he's really anal. <laughs> Are you doing it wrong? You have to do it my way. Uh You will? It's so creepy. Oh my god. Yeah. I'll help you chop while you keep an eye on the curry. No. Don't touch it, it's my masterpiece. <laughs> Instead. Could you please fetch me the onion? I don't like onions. <laughs> you know how I put onions in. Yuck. I don't like onions. Huh? Well, sure. Wait a second. And it's the worst job as well, giving someone to cut onions. No one wants to cut onions. I quickly grab an onion from the fridge before I hand it to you. To Who keeps onions in a fridge? <laughs> Keep them in the cellar and don't ever get them out again. Leave them. Put them in the bin. Just put them straight in the bin. Yuck. However, instead of grabbing the onion, it's a head. He grabs my hand. Pushes it onto the chopping board. Meanwhile, his other hand grabs a cleaver from the kitchen counter. Use the key. What are you? Without answering me, he brings the cleaver down onto my wrist. Ouch! <laughs> Shit! Dot dot dots. The pain is unimaginable. But for some reason, my voice won't come out. When I dare myself to look at my hand, I see the cleaver stuck midway through my wrist. Another pain. I see the cleaver getting pulled out. The voice strikes down again. And he keeps doing it. Over and over. By the end of it, I can't feel my hand anymore. I feel my consciousness fading away, but before it happens, I briefly hear and see Yuzuki. Thank you for lending me a hand, Aimee. <laughs> nice pun. I'll make sure that your suffering won't end in vain. You have reflected on your actions, haven't you? Ugh. What's that? You're sorry? Good. That's all I want to hear from you, Aimee. You can sleep now. 
the pen disappears soon. Good night, IME. God damn, bad and one. Jesus Christ, I told you you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> Hand. Oh, that was intense. That was an intense first uh, partake of Yuzuki's route. Let's get back into it then. Bloody hell. And this time, we are going to let him be and he can have his dirty onions. And I will leave him to it. I'm probably just overthinking it. I'm just gonna have orange juice for breakfast. I can't eat food in mornings. No thanks. He was just staring at me, that's all. Yuzuki puts the chopped potatoes into the curry and then looks at me again. By the way, Aimee, are you planning to go to school today? Don't touch the curry. <laughs> yeah, you'll be going too, right? No. Let's skip for today. I have a feeling this isn't going to be as cute as eating donuts and playing in the park and cleaning the park with Ichigo with this creepy weirdo. Huh. Yuzuki has always been a good student. So far, he has an almost perfect class attendance. While he's running away, he doesn't really give a shit. <laughs> I never thought he'll purposely skip like this. But remembering what happened yesterday, it's pretty understandable. Well, you'll leave by tomorrow. Then let's skip and spend the day here. I'm gonna stay at home. <laughs> Told you it we're gonna be boring. Oh, the curry seems to be done. He grabs a spoon from the kitchen counter before scooping some of the curry up. Then he starts to point at the spoon towards my mouth. Don't trust him. Would you like to have a taste, Amy? No. <laughs> Not particularly. Exclamation marks. Of course. Alright, she likes it. I'll let her have it. You can have it. Ow! Right. He's a hardcore sadist, this guy. Right. I forgot to tell you, it'll still be hot. Knowing that, Yuzuki pulls the spoon back and gives it a gentle blow. Sheesh. It's like we're a married couple or something. Here. It should be colder now. Thanks, Yuzuki. And of course, it tastes wonderful. What do you think? All good. Wait, let me grab the plates for us to eat. Breakfast at home with Yuzuki, who would have thought? It's usually just me eating breakfast alone. Or together with Ichigo. Speaking of Ichigo, He'd usually come and pick me up for school. I don't think he ever misses a day to do that. So why isn't he here today? Whatever, it's not like I'm going to school anywhere. It's better if he doesn't come at all. Stop being mean to Ichigo, he's adorable. Even if, he's a, <laughs> even if he is a yandere boy that kills people. So that I can enjoy my time alone with Yuzuki. Just the two of us. Ah, hello! They haven't come out since last night. Have a battle! Yandere battle! You chopped my hand off! I went for onions and you chopped my hand off! Save me, Ichigo! Save Amy! Save her now! Since last night, they're still all cooped up in there. Oh, so pissed. Disgusting. So Yuzuki is that kind of person after all. Should I just barge in and tell her that he's... No. She might get sad. I don't want to make her sad. Maybe I should use him. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll be the one to console her. That's it. <laughs> After we ate, the two of us spent our time reading. The second Yuzuki took a look at my book collection, he went into reading in no time. This is something you should be doing in your 50s, not when you're a teenager. 
I did remember him saying he loves reading books in his spare time. Well, I don't really mind. Spending time like this is pretty comfortable. But what I didn't expect was the book that he chooses. It was the book that he chose, sorry. <laughs> he seems to be immersed in it too, it's pretty shocking. I would have imagined him liking non-fiction books or poems, but I guess I was wrong. What's he reading? Eventually Yuzuki looks up from the book and sighs. Seeing that, I put my book down to talk to him. So, how is it so far? The book? Which rather entertaining. Which part are you on right now? Right now I'm at the part after the students left the building one by one and started killing each other. <laughs> well that sounds pleasant. 38 students are still alive by now. Isn't that an anime? Huh, I think that's exactly where I left off. Is that so? Then how about reading it together now? Oh! That sounds fun, let's do it! The two of us sit closer to each other until there's practically no gap between us and start reading. Our reading pace is pretty much the same, too, so neither of us interrupted the other. Eventually I hear Yuzuki sigh. If I were the main character, I don't think I would be able to trust Noriko that easily. Right, me too. I feel like they are too naive. Someone might look and act innocent, but there could be a monster inside. Ah. Uh, are you perhaps referring to yourself, Aimee? What? No, nothing like that. But... I really didn't expect you to be distrustful. You always seem so kind and trusting of others. Yeah, that's not an act at all. <laughs> like you said, someone so innocent could very well be hiding an ugly part of themselves. And you knew that better than anyone, don't you? Seriously, why do you keep insisting that? Why else? <laughs> because I know full well of what you did. Huh? Tell me. I me. Acting all innocent. Like nothing happened. Are you truly happy with this? What do you mean? Stop pretending like you don't know. You never loved me in the first place. It's only because I showed you some kindness and you latched onto it. And when it turns out that I wasn't able to give you what you want, you lost it. What? Someone will leave me once again. That's what you thought, right? What are you talking about? You don't know. That's funny. After all, you... Why does it keep going ahead? I didn't click it! Stop bloody going too fast! Dot dot dots. Dot dot dots. Looking for someone? Exclamation marks. <laughs> Sorry to sneak up behind you like that. So, like I was saying, are you looking for someone in class C? As far as I remember, you're Haruto from class 3B, right? You know me. Uh-huh, I know almost everyone from class 3A to 3E. So I can probably help you if you're looking for someone. Then, you do know Yuzuki, right? Who doesn't know Yuzuki? I take it you're looking for him? Yeah. Then I'll let you in on some juicy gossip of him. Gossip? See, it all started yesterday after school. My childhood friend, Aimee, Yuzuki and I were walking back home together. And then, just as we were about to split up, Aimee suddenly asks Yuzuki to go inside our house, together. Oh, well, I'm still there too. The nerve of her. 
I know she has a crush on him, but it wouldn't hurt her to be more tactful, right? And here comes the juicy part. By morning, the two of them never left Daimi's house. Can you believe that? They even skipped school together. That's... Ah! I wonder what they're doing since yesterday night. It's very suspicious, right? Hey... Aren't you curious too, Haruto? Maybe Yuzuki is still in Aimi's house even until now. Ah well, it's not my place to meddle. If Aimi is happy, then I am also happy. I hope you can find Yuzuki. I'll see you later. I want to know this guy's story. Why are you Yuzuki's friend is weird. <laughs> Yuzuki. What was I doing again? Looking at the window, apparently it's already evening. That's weird. The last time I was reading a book with Yuzuki, didn't I? Yeah. I have to see him. I have to make sure he's fine. Upon entering my living room, I see Yuzuki sitting on the sofa. Is he still reading? He's been reading that book all day now. Yuzuki? Yuzuki? Hey. Say something. Is he broken? Oh. No, it's back. It's okay. Ah, Aimee. Are you feeling better? Feeling... better? Yes, you suddenly collapsed earlier. If you're still feeling unwell, perhaps we should go see a doctor. No. There's no need for that. I'm perfectly fine, see? Are you really sure about that? Yeah, don't worry. Then... Then at least let's have you rest in your room. Come, I'll escort you up. Yuzuki puts his hand gently on my back as he walks me back to my room. This is giving me weird vibes. I waste no time to lay on my bed. Seeing that, Yuzuki gives me a look of concern. You're battered up, Aimee. Why? How about I open the window and let in some fresh air? Open the window yourself, let him be. I'm going to... I think that'll lead to the next bad end, so we'll go for that. We will open the window ourselves, because he does not like us to be independent. And he doesn't like our help. No, it's fine. Let me open it myself. I get up from my bed again, heading towards the window. When I open it, a gust of cold wind enters the room. Right, it's still winter. I just stare outside for a while. Then, before I knew it, I was already falling down. Ah. Oh. It seems that this is it for me. Even though I look up, I can't see Yuzuki anywhere. Yuzuki? No, that's right. Of course he's not here. He's already... Bad end to... Guilt. What the fuck was that? Excuse me. Right, on to the next end then, shall we? And we are going to let him be again. He does not like independence, do not be independent. Yuzuki opens the window slightly in my stead, and cold wind makes its way in. Even though it's winter, fresh air is still fresh. Please rest up. I'll make you some soup. After Yuzuki left, I just stare at the ceiling for some time. 
I close my eyes. What kind of soap? I close my eyes and by the time I open it again, I feel a vibration in my pockets. Someone's trying to call me, it seems. Looking at my phone, I see 20 missed calls from this morning until fairly recently. And it's all from Ichigo. I can only sigh at that. I know he means well, but sometimes he can get way too nosy and overprotective. So I decided to give him a call. Aimee! Well, that didn't take him long at all. <laughs> Poor Ichigo. What do you want? Huh? You didn't leave your house all day and skip school. Of course I'll be worried. Hey. Are you sick or something? Kind of. And Yusuke just lets you be. He's with you, right? It's nothing like that. Look, just shut up and mind your own business. Shut up, you bitch. We're only childhood friends, that's all. So don't get too cocky. I'm gonna smack this- <laughs> I'm not really gonna smack this child, I swear. I'm not gonna. I feel like smacking this child, because you're a little arrogant bitch, but okay. I mean, I'm so Hearing that, it just has nothing else to say, I decided to cut the call off. Can you stop skipping it for me, please? I can very well do that myself. I'm fully capable of skipping it. Leave me alone. Almost immediately after, I see Ichigo calling me again. To which I responded by throwing my phone off somewhere. Yuzuki must have heard because I hear his footsteps walking up towards the room. Aimee, what's wrong? No, sorry, it's nothing. On second thought, do you want me to accompany you? That'd be nice. Yuzuki nods at that before he sits beside me. Aimee, truthfully, there's something I want to ask. Hmm? Since... Since when did you start falling for me? What? What kind of question is that? No, sorry, I was just curious. Well... My feelings just gradually grow for you over time. At first it was just a normal attraction, an admiration. You're good looking and your grades are perfect. I did feel envious at one point. But when you started talking to me, I began to notice how nice and humble you actually are. Despite your achievements, you never brag about yourself and you're always supportive of others. You even started helping me study, even though I could be hard to deal with sometimes. There aren't that many people who care about me in the first place. Other than Ichigo that you make feel like trash. <laughs> yeah, no one cares really, obviously. And then the rest is history. I see. Mm. Since I've shared why I fell for you, how about telling me why you love me? Hmm, do I really have to? <laughs> That's not a red flag at all, is it? Please! Yuzuki let out a sigh of defeat before he looked at me. The reason why I love you... Well, I just love the way you are. It's a very generic answer. Or at least... That's what you wanted to hear, isn't it? A sense of dread suddenly wraps around me. In the first place, Yuzuki never loved you. No. Shut up. I me. Everything is just a what? I can't read that writing! Shut up! I've tried telling you so many times, but you just kept blocking me off. Will you continue to do that, or will you actually try to face the truth now? Are we going to run away, or are we going to face the truth? Uh, which do I think is going to get me killed faster? Let's run away. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. Come on. Wipe that frown from your face. From now on, I'll never mention anything about the truth anymore. I love you, Aimee. Let's be together forever from now on. Yes. Is he imaginary? <laughs> Bad end three. Living in delusions. That's a strange end. Right, let's go ahead again. Let's face the truth. Right, we are now going to face the truth. But if I do, then you'll disappear. I know. But perhaps it's better that way. You've committed something unforgivable after all. The rabbit was already dead, I swear. <laughs> no matter how hard you try to look away or run, it still won't erase what you did. Yuzuki then puts his hands on my cheeks gently. Look there. I gulp before obliging him and look over to where he told me to look. We murdered him! That's right. Last night I... Yes. By giving that gift I'm saying that um, I like you. More than just a friend. Oh. I confess to Yuzuki. I see. I understand. I me. I'm sorry. I'm prepared for rejection. I can always try to get close and win his heart, but the truth is, I already have a lover. It's Harita! <laughs> Boy love! Dot dot dots. Uh huh? Yes. I'm sorry for keeping secrets from you. His cheeks reddened, his facial expressions softened. It's a face I've never seen before. But. But I've never seen him dating anyone. There's never a rumour about him dating, too. Does he hate me that much to the point of lying to me? With. with whom? I made a promise not to tell, so I can't tell you. He can't say. Liar. But I suppose I can tell you this much. The day after tomorrow, I'll be going with my lover to Tokyo. Oh my god, boy love! Yay! <laughs> Please keep it a secret. And with that, I also want to thank you for your kindness up to this point. Leave him alone. I feel bad for saying I didn't like Yuzuki now. I like him now. Cute. <laughs> now you're telling me that you leave me behind? Well. Pardon? You're so cruel. Do you really hate me that much, Yuzuki? Ah. Uh, I'm really sorry, Aimee. I don't hate you, I promise. Just say you're gay, then she can understand. Mm. I don't mind treating you to somewhere tomorrow as an apology. No, that, that'll be useless. Aimee? Don't leave. Aimee, but please calm down and put the knife down. I'm sorry. Okay, let's have a cover. What? Have a conversation, and then what? You'll still leave me in the end. Aimee, please. I don't want to hurt you. Then stay with me. I can't, Aimee. Can't you understand that? Then. I'll make you stare. I may. Please, just let me. Gah. The last thing I remember was 
Yuzuki grabbing a bottle from the side before he swings it to my head. That explains the X. That's right, I... I never felt a feeling so painful as last night. And so... Yesterday night, I killed Yuzuki. I thought doing this would be better than letting him go, but... I was wrong. Yuzuki... I'm... Sorry. So... So sorry. Part Yuzuki. Aftermath. Oh dear. That was mental. <laughs> Jesus. Two years ago. Sorry, Haruto. The results of ranking of the midterm exam is already out. And of course, my place in the ranking is average. Rank 42nd out of 124 first year students. It is pretty good, but who remembers the one at the 42nd rank anywhere? No matter how hard I try, this is the best I can do, I guess. Maybe it's time to kiss my dream goodbye. Of course, the one who ranked first is Yuzuki. We went to the same school since elementary up until now, and I guess he's still as impressive as ever. Must be nice. Born in a rich family, having a bright mind. It's like... He's a prince and I'm a normal peasant. A mob character. Being a mob character isn't all that bad, really. But sometimes I wish my life is just more entertaining. Oh, the bell. I'm sure today too will end up just like usual. Or at least, that's what I thought. But what is this? I was just reading a comic near the school storage, but Yuzuki suddenly shows up and I instinctively hit. And he seems to be practicing volleyball. Ugh, he sucks at it too. Since it's starting to get painful for me to just watch, I decide to leave my hiding spot. Hey Yuzuki. You're Haruto. Huh? So you remember me? That's a surprise. Anywhere. Do you need help with that? I point at the ball that he's holding, causing Yuzuki to chuckle nervously. You, s you saw what I was doing? Yeah. I never knew you suck at volleyball. From what I remember, when we were at middle school, you seemed decent at it. Uh, no use hiding it, I suppose. Please keep this a secret. Actually, I'm very bad at sports. Seriously? Well, I know you're not the best at it, but you don't seem that bad at it. That's because I practiced. Whenever we have PE, I'll always look at what we're doing and then practice it ahead of time. Well, not just PE. I also do it for other subjects, so that I won't have to worry about my grades. That sounds tedious. I just don't want to look like a fool in front of others. Again, please don't tell others about this. It's embarrassing. Uh huh. Nobody is perfect at everything. No one is perfect. So it's not perfect after all. Nobody is. Don't put that sort of pressure on people. He has put a lot of effort into his work. Unlike me who just gave up and settles for the average. Him earning the top spot in almost every ranking makes sense now. That's impressive. I guess I've always been wrong about him. But anyway, I see a golden opportunity here. Want me to teach you sports then? You will? Yeah, but not for free. I'll teach you sports and in exchange you'll teach me the usual school subjects like math and social studies. Ah, that sounds perfect! Then we have a deal. I honestly don't know why out of all people he agreed to let an average guy like me teach him. 
But that doesn't matter. Maybe now I don't have to abandon my dream after all. He's probably just happy to have someone talk to him like normal. Ever since that day, we'd meet up for our studying sessions after school. It's actually helpful for me. Yuzuki has a natural talent as a teacher and his explanation is very easy to understand. However, I'll admit that I'm not doing that good of a job teaching him. The fact that he's still not as fit as I thought doesn't help. Even so, he keeps agreeing to me anywhere. He might be lonely, or at least that's the feeling I get when I see him. A week passes and I'd say we're friends by now. Our study together session is still going. For that, we usually use the school's storage because almost no one goes there. Yuzuki cares so much about how people think of him sometimes. This is something I've noticed after a while. Not that I mind too much. I don't really like being in crowded places after all. Today is the same as usual. We're supposed to meet in the storage, yet again. But he's late. I wonder what happened. Last night he did say that he's going to have an all-nighter to practice. Ah, Haruto! Sorry I've kept you waiting, didn't I? Yeah, you did. What's up? Well... Yuzuki pulls his sleeve down, showing me his bandaged left wrist. Let me guess, you trained too hard last night. Yes. I let out a long sigh before I pull my comic out. Well, that's that. Let's just hang out today. Will that be alright? What do you mean? If I force you to train anyway, your hand's got to break off. Just sit down beside me and enjoy the day off. Rest up, Yuzuki. Ah, alright. <laughs> so tell me, why did you push yourself? Mm, because I don't want to annoy you. I thought if I practice before you teach me, it'll lessen your burden. Huh? Then you're just doing the same thing as you were doing before. I admire your determination, I do. But you take it too far sometimes. And look, you're way too self-conscious. It's not entirely your fault. I admit I'm also bad at teaching. But isn't that the point of this whole study together thing? We're bad at what we're doing, so we're learning how to get better. I suppose you're right. Despite his answer, his expression tells me that he's not convinced at all. I let out another sigh at that and decide to ask him something. Yusuke, why are you so afraid of being bad at something? I know you mentioned not wanting to look like a fool, but is that really all? Well, to be honest, my parents are very strict. What would others think of them if I performed badly? My mother is a doctor, my father is a teacher. What would others think of them if I perform badly? Ah, even if your parents are smart, they're not smart enough to raise their child properly, it seems. That would embarrass my parents greatly, so they'd punish me whenever I don't have good grades or whenever I misbehave. I know behind all that punishment, my parents also mean well. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. Should let your kids have a bit more free range than that. But. Well, anyway, that's why I'm afraid of making mistakes. Pocket. Okay, I get it. You want to avoid being punished by your parents, huh? Do your parents even know that you can't do everything perfectly? Parents are stupid. Well,. At the very least, even if your parents don't, everyone else knows that nobody is perfect. True. You said that your parents only punish you whenever you don't have good grades, right? Then I'll tell you, doing a tiny mistake won't make you have bad grades. Admitting you're bad at sports definitely won't ruin your PE grade. With PE, the teacher is usually kind enough to give you a good grade purely from your effort anywhere. And I know you've really worked hard to be able to perform at least decently at it. The teacher should be able to see it too. What I'm trying to say is, you're not perfect at sports, but it's fine. He looks somewhat surprised by it. Maybe he's not convinced yet. Well, 
I guess your parents' way of teaching must have turned you into perfectionist as well. Setting your parents aside for a moment. I think there is a benefit of letting others know that you're not so good at something. There is? Yeah. I'll be honest, before this I've always thought you seemed too perfect. Not just me, almost everyone I know thinks so too. So sometimes we feel kind of intimidated by you, you know? Like you're on a different league than us. Is that so? I never knew. But that would explain some things. Yeah, so don't be afraid to admit your flaws and make mistakes. That way you'll get used to it and you won't beat yourself up every little mistake you make. Plus, it'll make you seem more approachable. This kid's got a good head. I get it, I'll try out your advice, Haruto. It's a shame that uh, Ichigo chops his head off because he's got a good noggin on him. Thank you for telling me that. I also felt better after telling you how I feel. Glad I could help. Oh, uh, what's the matter? It's almost time for my part-time job. Man, time flies. Ah, you work part-time? Yeah, I need to learn how to be independent and save up from now on. I'm planning to leave this small town to go to Tokyo once I graduate after all. It's not like my parents will feed me forever. I say, will you be going there by yourself? Mm-hmm. So I'll see you later. Harita, wait. Could I come with you? Hmm? But how about your father? He'll pick you up later, right? I'll call him and let him know. Hey, hey. You know your house is pretty far from here. You get tired easily, too. Are you sure about that? Harita, you're too blunt sometimes. But I'll be fine. It'll be a good way to get exercise in, too. If you say so, just don't complain if your legs end up bandaged to tomorrow. Yuzuki started to accompany me home since then. It only lasted for a few weeks though. I notice people are starting to befriend Yuzuki nowadays. He probably took my advice. Or maybe that's just me wanting to believe that all my advice didn't go to waste. Either way, Yuzuki has been pretty busy handling his social life. He even forgot to come to our studying sessions. Eventually I just stopped asking him to come. Which leads me back to square one. Here I am now, reading comics alone near the storage like I always do, when I have nothing else to do. I'm happy that Yuzuki seems to be getting even more popular now. And yet, it feels lonely. I have other friends besides Yuzuki of course, but spending time with him feels different somehow. I guess that prince managed to charm me too in the end. No, 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 what the hell am I thinking? Even though I have my favourite comic right here, my mind drifts off just like that. I need to focus. I've been excited for this volume to come out after all. Hmm? There's a pile of cardboard box in front of me, and one of them just topples down. Is someone there? What the hell are you doing, Yuzuki? Um, stop hiding and come here. Sit beside me. All right. So what brings you here? I was wondering why you stopped asking me to come study together. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? That reminds me, I've always been the one asking for us to meet. When I stopped, his self-consciousness is probably acting up again. No, you're fine. I just thought you're busy. If you wanted to study together, you could have just asked. I don't mind. I see. I thought you were angry. Angry? Nothing like that. Actually, I'm pretty proud. I see people are starting to approach and befriend you. What do you think? It's nice, but it's rather chaotic. One group invites me out and then another also invites me out. And I don't want to say no to either group, so it's quite tiring. That's also part of why I'm here, right now. I kind of escaped from them. Yuzuki, you know you can't please everyone, right? Of course, but still. Next time, just say no to them if you really don't want to. If you don't, people are going to take advantage of you. 
Uh, I got scolded again. It's easier said than done, but I'll try. There you go. For now, let's just stay here and relax, yeah? Feel free to do whatever you want here. Yes. My mood's gotten better now. Knowing that Yuzuki didn't forget about me is pretty relieving. Ah, Harito, could I ask you something? What's up? You seem to like that comic. I was wondering what it is. Huh? You don't know? Are you living under a rock or something? Hmm? I guess you're not well versed in pop culture then. Fine, I'll tell you. It's just a detective comic that I've followed since I was little. It tells the story of a high schooler detective who was drugged by this organisation and became an elementary school student. Oh, I see. Is that why you wanted to become a detective? Huh? How did you know? You said so in class during elementary school, didn't you? Well, yeah, but how did you even remember that? That happened like eight years ago. Well, when the teacher told us to tell about our dreams, one by one at the time, nobody was as excited as you were. I thought it's impressive how you seem so passionate about your dream. It's clear that it's something you want for yourself, and despite the fact that someone made fun of you after, you continue to stand firm. I really admire that. Well, I'm glad my extreme otaku fears inspired you somehow. This might disappoint you, but I've been thinking about giving that dream up. It's a bit too far-fetched after all. What do you mean? I like detective comics and TV shows, sure. But... I'm no one special, really. My grades are so-so, and while I can do sports, I absolutely have no idea how to defend myself. I like solving puzzles and riddles, but I'm no genius at it. No matter how hard I try to be better at my studies, or do whatever I do, the results are always... average. This is a very long-winded segment. Sorry for the sudden rant. Just forget I said anything. Hmm? But I'm fine with you ranting about your problems, Harita. And... You're quite the hypocrite, aren't you? Even though you were telling me how imperfection is alright just a few weeks ago. I will admit your abilities in studying is rather average. And that normally, you don't stand out. Going straight for the gut, aren't you? Going straight for the gut, aren't you? Where the hell did that kind and considerate Yuzuki go? Ah, uh, sorry. I'm not finished yet. Oh god. Even if you are just average. It's not... It's not as if you have to be someone special to become a detective, right? Huh? The comic you like, it tells the story of a high school a detective. Do you perhaps feel like you should be like that? To be able to become a proper detective? Well it's unrealistic that it had happened, but... There you have it. Not every detective is born a genius, right? And before becoming a detective, you'd have to learn from scratch, don't you? Yeah. Then as you said before, that's the point of learning. You're bad at it, and learning to become better. Well, being a genius is nice. If you aren't one, then you don't have to beat yourself up after it. I'm a firm believer that if you're passionate about something, you can always find a way to succeed in the end. And I don't think you're actually willing to give up your dream, despite what you said. Ah, so I'm right. With how hard working you are, I believe you can do it, Haruto. I'll help you to achieve that dream however I can. Okay, you can stop right there. He didn't make fun of me. Hell, he even encouraged me wholeheartedly like that. That's... a first. Thank you, Yuzuki. That means a lot. You're welcome, Haruto. Oh, by the way, about that comic. Will it be alright to borrow the first volume? Eh, you're interested in it? Yes, yeah, something like that. Let me warn you, we already have a hundred volumes of this. That's a lot. But it's alright. And just like that, we've gotten closer again. Months passed and in a blink of an eye, winter came. It's February now. Whew, Harita, bloody hell. To be more exact, it's Valentine's Day. I've only ever gotten chocolates from my friends, so I don't expect this year's Valentine's Day to be any different. Hey Harita! Speaking of friends, here comes a girl from my class. Hey Hannah, came here for your yearly chocolate. Duh! 
Here, I got you your favourite. Thanks, and here's your cashew chocolate. Yeah, now this is the good stuff. How's it going? Got any chocolate from a guy this year? I wish. How about you, Herita? Oh wait, I don't need to ask. With guys like Yuzuki and Ichigo, there's no way you're getting one. Rude. You're not wrong. Speak of the devil. Look who's coming this way. Oh, hey, Yuzuki. Hello there, you two. And of course, here comes... And of course he comes by us with two handbags full of chocolate. Show off. Why is he looking at my chocolate like that? Herita, are you free right now? Yeah, what's up? Let's go to the usual place together. I can sense my friend's curious eyes looking at me. I try to shrug it off and play it cool. Right now? Yes. Huh? Seems urgent. Huh? Seems urgent. Well, sure. I take a look at my friend again and lightly wave at her. See you later. She gives me a wink and an okay gesture before the two of us walk away. So, you seem like you want to talk about something. I'm just curious. Who's that girl you were with? Oh, what's this? Is he interested in her? I'll give him a vague answer to see what he responds with. Her name is Hannah. I see. But what's your relationship with her? Oh, yeah. He's definitely interested in her. Hannah will freak out when she hears this. We're friends, classmates. Do you want me to introduce you to her? Hmm? I can even take you to her right now if you want. Wait, no, that's not what I'm saying. Come on. Stop being so shy and let me take you to her. Harita! I'm not interested in her. What? Then why did you even ask that question? Huh? Wait, don't tell me. The one I love. It's you, Harita. So cute! Are you serious? Yes. What? You do know I'm a guy, right? Yes, I do. And I don't mind. That's not the point. What would the others think if they knew you confessed to me? Hell, what would your parents think? Uh, also, we live in a small town and... But we can just keep it a secret, right? That's... I do admit that I'm scared of thinking what will happen if we're found out. But I just thought that... If I don't do this, I will regret it. Don't you know that I could go around spreading the fact that you confessed me to everyone? No, I know you won't do that. You're a good person, Harita. Are you hearing yourself right now? This is stupid, Yuzuki. Well, love makes you do stupid things after all. You're always so stubborn, aren't you? I really don't get you. Out of anyone else, you just had to fall for me. Why wouldn't I fall for you? You're the hard- what? Excuse me? Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh -huh. Why wouldn't I fall for you? You're hard-working, steadfast, honest, passionate. Okay, okay, stop that. It's embarrassing. I let out a long sigh. Logically, I should reject him and forget that this ever happened. It's better for the two of us. But despite what I told him, I'm also an idiot. Yuzuki. I like you too. Could you say it again, Haruto? I know you heard me the first time. <laughs> You're so stingy. But I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Cute. A year passed. Today is the 1st of February and it's this day that I stumble upon something I shouldn't. That scared me. Friggin' hell. My legs are numb from running too much and my heart beats as if it's going to burst out of my chest at any moment. 
Eventually I fell down and started vomiting. All this time I've read many mystery books and watched many mystery TV shows. I never once thought I'd be witnessing an actual murder happening right before my eyes. That killer was definitely the one behind all those missing people. Hacking and mutilating a body so easily like that. Luckily I don't think the killer saw me. I'll go to the police tomorrow. I didn't get enough evidence and it's risky. The killer might come for me. But it's better than letting a killer wander around. Someone else might even die if I just stay quiet. It's terrifying. But I had to do what I have to do. I won't let that killer get away with it. No matter what. Ninth of February. I reported to the police, told them who did it, but they didn't find anything. Then they told my parents to reprimand me for my disruptive behaviour. Which means I'll have to get more reliable evidence. The problem is, I initially thought that the killer didn't see me. But I've always felt like I'm being watched and followed nowadays. It's starting to feel dangerous, I don't want to risk it and... Haruto! Why? Why did he suddenly send me that text? Did something happen? Before I answer him, I look around and check around the place to make sure that the killer isn't around. When I'm completely sure nobody else but us is around, I finally answered him. Yuzuki, I'm sorry but I can't tell you what actually happened. I've decided to leave him in the dark, otherwise he might meddle and get involved. If he does, the killer might go after him. That's the last thing I want. Please, just stay away from me until the 15th of February. We can meet up then, at the station before I go to Tokyo. You really can't tell me, no matter what? Yeah. Sorry, Yusuke. Then, I'll come with you to Tokyo. Huh? Six days are enough for me to prepare almost everything. So you don't have to worry. What are you saying? Don't do it! You'll graduate in only a few months. But so are you. You're right, but for me it's different. I have something urgent to do, that's why I'll be leaving, but you don't. You leaving is urgent to me though. You know we can just communicate with our phones, right? If you're in trouble, then I want to be by your side and help you. But how about your parents? Haruto, I'm sure by now you're aware that I don't feel happiest at home. I'll admit, I've had thoughts of running away from home, but I could never do it. However, if I'm together with you, I think I'll be able to do it. I'll just be killing two birds with one stone here. I could be by your side and run away from home. God, you're always so stubborn. Fine, if you want to come with, then I'll let you. Really? Yeah. But I want you to do three things for me. One, you can't tell anyone that I'm leaving. If you want to tell someone, then go ahead, just don't bring my name up. Second, I want you to really think about this. Running away won't be easy. I could always pick you up whenever you're absolutely ready and sure instead. And finally, again, please avoid me for the time being. I'll contact you through our phones instead. Alright, I'll be sure to do that. Still, I don't know what's going on, but please, always remember that I'll be here if you need me. Yeah. Yeah, thanks Yuzuki. Of course, the same goes to you. Contact me right away if something happens. Yet despite that, at the 14th of February yesterday, Yuzuki suddenly went missing. His parents said that he hasn't come back home. While his parents went to the police, I decided to head to that girl's house. Going to Tokyo can wait. I need to make sure if Yuzuki is alright first. I don't trust Ichigo, but he might be telling the truth. I guess I'll check it out then.
I should probably clean things up soon. Yeah, before the police find out, I need to. Suddenly I feel a vibration inside Yuzuki's pocket. It's Yuzuki's phone. It's been vibrating a lot since last night. I guess I should check it now. There are countless missed calls from his parents and... Who the hell is Sweetheart? Oh, that's cute. Did he... Actually have a lover? Scrolling through their messages beforehand, I found out a few things. Sweetheart is just the contact name for a person called Haruto. Judging from Haruto's profile picture, he's brown haired, average looking and around our age. I don't know what Yuzuki even sees in him. And the way Yuzuki texts this Haruto, it's like he's infatuated with this Haruto. To the point that they'd want to run away together? I wonder who that is. I get it from my bed. Despite how light my head feels. Just before I leave the room, I look at the knife stuck in Yuzuki's life lock. Just before I, but just before I leave my room, I look at the knife stuck on Yuzuki's lifeless body. Oof! Bloody hell! We've got choices again. Um, let's take the knife. Just to be safe, I decided to take the knife with me. Once I'm near my front door, I open the front door slightly. On the other side of the door is... Sorry to interrupt, but you're eyeing me, right? There's no mistaking it. He's Haruto. I heard Yuzuki is in here. Is that true? Yes. I open the door wide for him to enter. This is all his fault. So I'll show it to him. But instead of walking in, Haruto stares at me. Are you... injured? So what? And Yusuke is here, you say? Ugh, the smell. And why is there so much blood? No, don't tell me. Haruto must have noticed something very wrong as he suddenly bolts off while shouting frantically. Yuzuki! Are you in here? I only closed the door behind me before following Haruto up the stairs. When I finally catch up to him, he's in my room. I see him staring at Yuzuki. He stands there, seemingly paralysed. You. Did you do this? Yes. Why? What did Yuzuki even do to deserve this? Nothing. What? Stop fucking around with me! If he's done nothing, then why did you- It's because of you. Huh? I killed him because he'll leave. With you. I wanted to be together with him, but he'll just leave me behind. If only you didn't ask him to leave. No, if only you two never dated in the first place. This would never happen. Music would still be living and he would date me instead, so... Yeah, I don't think being gay works that way. The hell? Do you think? Sorry, Matt. You let your guard down. Ugh. After he fell to the ground, I pulled the knife from his neck, causing him to lose a significant amount of blood. He twitches and writhes in pain for a short while, until he stops. That makes it two now. Before I could do anything, I hear commotion outside. Ah, it seems that like the police came already. I guess this is it then. Where's Ichigo? My mum and dad are right. I am a monster. The only way I can atone now will be this. Oh dear. Aimee. Ugh, Aimee. I... It's my fault. Where the fuck were you? If only I kept you from confessing. If only I checked sooner. Nothing matters now. 
without I me. I'd rather. Bad end. Until none is left. We all died together! Yay! Right, again we go. Again we go. Last end, probably. I don't know. <laughs> right, we are now going to leave the knife. And see what happens. Once I'm near my front door, I open the door slightly. On the other side of the door is... Sorry to interrupt, but you're eyeing me, right? So it was pretty much the same. Apart from that, I don't think we kill him in this one. Stop spouting bullshit. What, are you trying to make me feel guilty? Too bad, I have no reason to. He died because you killed him. Don't you dare point your finger towards others for what you did. True. To think. I tried to help you before this. You're no different after all. No, you might be even worse. After punching me, he takes the tape from my desk and starts to tie me up with him. So he attacked us. Instead of us attacking him. I just let him do it. In the end, he's right. No matter how many times I try to deny and delude myself, I'm the one who did the deed. Yuzuki's his parents have contacted the police. And thanks to your friend, we know that Yuzuki has never left this house. They should be here any moment now. So don't even think of doing anything funny unless you want a heavier punishment. Sure enough, what he said is true. The police eventually came. I was taken away. Some days passed. Or has it been months already? I couldn't tell. In the end, I was sent to juvenile prison. While I was there, an unexpected guest arrived to meet me. Hi, Aimee. Ichigo. Sorry it took this long for me to visit you. I just... I never expected you to. No, sorry. That's not why I came here today. What I'm trying to say is... I'll wait for you. Huh? Ichigo, what are you saying? I said I'll wait for you. I've killed a person though. Despite what you did, I'll still welcome you when you're released. She killed a little boy! She's not getting out! She's stopping in there! I'll take you to our favourite places. We'll eat tons of delicious sweets like we used to. Until that time comes, I'll wait and visit you every day. Okay? I'll make sure to visit you so often that you'll get tired of seeing my face. Bold of you to assume that I'm not tired of seeing your face already. Ah, so you can still joke around like that. That's relieving. I'm glad. Oh, sorry for not being able to stay here for long, Aimee. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Good end. Second chance. We did it. So yeah, that was Sweetest Valentine. I really enjoyed that. It had many different endings that I didn't see coming half the time. Very interesting, very well done. Really enjoyed that. Right, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.